You kill or you die. Or you die and you kill. You're either the cattle or you're the butcher. You have to protect what's yours or it becomes somebody else's. This has become the philosophy of the big villains in The Walking Dead. They all have this similar outlook on what has become of the world. But who was the worst of the worst? Now, I'm not rating this list based off of situations that happen. For instance, a lot of people would say Negan is the worst because he killed their favorites, Glenn or Abraham. But I'll be rating them according to overall pure evilness. Now, this is the top five list of the worst and pure evil villains on The Walking Dead. And I have a couple extra honorable mentions just because of their screen time and their effect on the story. But I didn't feel like I had enough to do a top ten. So our first honorable mention is Dawn and the Officers at Grady Memorial. I had to throw her and her group in here as honorable mention because they took a big chunk of screen time. Now, honestly, this is one of my least favorite storylines of the show, but how evil was Don and this group? Well, it's almost hard to tell. First, let's talk Gorman and Beth. Most of the other officers were just following orders from their leader, but Gorman went and took things to the next level. He had that weird encounter with Beth. He took it upon himself to force Beth to share a lollipop with him. Beth was able to smash a glass jar against his skull and allowing a walker to kill him. The real problem is Don allowed this to happen by just turning a blind eye to this behavior. On the other hand, she actually seemed to care for people and wanted to help them. She took in Carol and nursed her back to health. We aren't exactly sure who took Beth, so we can't say it was Don's doing. Don had a view that everything she did was for the greater good. Now that's why she makes this list of honorable mention. We can't really say how evil she was, but there were situations that would happen under her watch of things that were of an evil nature. So that's why she makes the list of honorable mention. And like I said, that was one of my least favorite storylines was that whole Grady Memorial story. Now, our second honorable mention are the Wolves. The Wolves were a group that came and gone pretty rapidly. They had some screen time, but a lot of it was just hints of who and what they did. We don't know anything of pre-apocalypse of who they are. At some point, they came together and started luring survivors into traps in order to take their supplies. They always carve the W in the forehead of their victims. They also write this on their forehead as well, or carve it into themselves. Locations they have raided, they graffiti wolves not far. They raided the estates that Noah was previously at, burning down houses and killing its inhabitants. Later on, a group of around two dozen wolves attack Alexandria, killing and raiding Alexandria. The true motives of the wolves isn't very clear. Some talk about freeing those that are in safe places. Some try to chain and take away their victims. And some just mercilessly kill whoever they see. One thing we do know is that they have really no compassion for anyone or anything. Now let's get into my top five. And I know I will probably get a lot of backlash for my number five. But number five is Negan and the Saviors. Negan has gone over a large transformation over time. Some people hate him and some people love him. What we can all agree on is his charismatic personality that allowed him to grow a group of followers that would do whatever he said. They even called themselves Negan. He created a violent code that was able to allow him to take control of any communities that he came across. His opening intimidation act made those communities feel like they had no other choice but to follow his rules. Along with killing some fan favorites of Glenn and Abraham, taking on multiple wives, and stealing them from their husbands. One thing we do know and saw was that he didn't allow forceful rape and killed his own man because he tried to rape Sasha. 
He took control of multiple communities by violent force. But he had a soft spot for the Grimes kids. He loved and respected Carl, and he loves and respects Judith. He even ran off into a snowstorm to find and save Judith. He made a pact with Carol and killed Alpha. He has turned over a new leaf in his chapter of life, but is just this just another survival tactic, or is he truly a changed man? So because of the possible true transformation of Negan, I had to put him at number five because he was able to go back and do things for the communities. And more importantly, I think he did a lot of this for Judith and in the memory of Carl. So that's why I had to put him at number five. So number four is Gareth and the Termites at Terminus. Like Chris Hardwick called them, he called them the Termites on the Talking Dead, so that's what we're going to call them here. This was another short-lived group of villains. The build-up to Terminus was a long road full of broken promises. They had a great system of getting survivors looking for a place to honker down. Front gates unlocked, and the barbecue fire burning looked like a place that was too good to be true. Gareth was a cannibal that led a group of cannibals. Now, cannibalism is something that is creepy just in general, but when you sucker people into thinking they are finding safety and security for all, but all they find is a slaughterhouse. They showed a short backstory of being tortured and raped by a group of unknown people who they were able to escape and take back Terminus. This is where you either or the cattle, or the butcher was born. They went from being cattle to being Hannibal Lecter. Cannibalism can only make sense if it is your last means of survival, but this just isn't the case. At this point, there was still plenty of food sources. Rick was able to grow a garden. Later on, Negan and the Saviors were able to feed everyone that was in the sanctuary, obviously from the food that he took from other communities. Gareth and his group were volunteer cannibals, and that makes it that much worse. Even after Terminus was destroyed, they tracked down Rick, they captured Bob, cut off his leg, and ate it right in front of him. That is pure evil. And that's why they come in at number four on my list. Now, number three. And these top three were really hard for me to put three, two, and one. They could probably be very interchangeable. But number three is the governor. And the governor was a true villain at the deepest part of his core. I honestly think he was a true sociopath. His one and only form of emotion he ever showed truly was the love he had for his daughter. Other than that, let's start the list of everything else. He seemed to be a great leader, but he was using everyone for what he truly wanted. He convinced Andrea to fall for him, and she couldn't even kill him when she had the opportunity, and that was to protect her former group that she was part of. He had a fish tank full of walker heads. He killed a group of military men just to take their weapons, and he lied to his community about it. He threatened to rape Maggie. After his group fled the prison, he gunned them all down, really for no reason. After he created a new life and family within Martinez's new group, he could have moved on, but he wanted to get revenge on Rick. He convinced the group to attack the prison after he killed Martinez and took over. He cut off Herschel's head in front of his daughters. The governor showed no remorse for anyone or anything. He was a true villain. And like I said, one, two, and three could pretty much be interchangeable, but I had to put the governor at number three. Now, number two is Alpha and the Whispers. And you're probably wondering, okay, so who is number one? If you already have the governor, you already have Alpha, you already have Negan. Who is number one? We will get there. But Alpha and the Whisperers were an interesting group of villains. And obviously, we still have them left on the show with Beta 
and the Whispers. They brought something different than everyone else. Alpha can be considered pure evil or a genius depending on how you view her ways. She figured out that you can base your whole way of live, living life amongst the wasp walkers as opposed to trying to always keep them away. They pretty much are defended by keeping everyone out of their borders with the walker horde and walkers that they have around them. They can hide amongst them as they go from place to place. Alpha was a person who never wanted to be redeemed. She didn't care of having a better way of life. Alpha truly believed that she was the right and there was no other way. Alpha was so charismatic that she was able to convince her followers to trust and believe everything she was preaching. This was shown in Gamma, even killing her sister to protect Alpha. Now we know Gamma did eventually see a different side of life, but Beta would follow her till death and even after, and he did. She had a way of having everything planned out from the Pike situation. She captured everyone and even infiltrated the community fair. Ironically, Carol and Negan were able to devise a plan that was ultimately her demise. Her disregard to life was her biggest evil quality. That fact that she would leave Adam to die by walkers takes this to another level. Some would debate the, ki the kid mentioned at the hilltop that was killed that was 16, but we can f can't fully prove that it was Negan who killed him. So that's why, just because the disregard to life and just being allowing walkers to be able to consume a baby puts her at the list at number two even though they didn't succeed in that plan and adam was able to be rescued and is now in the communities but just to see her disregard for any form of life why they would even take the baby with them i have no idea but the fact that she would just allow a baby to be eaten by walkers puts her at number two so who could be number one? You might not agree with me, but Joe and the Claimers are number one. This was an interesting set of villains. They weren't in very many episodes and they didn't go invading Alexandria. And they were a group of bad people that Daryl ran with for a few. Daryl had no idea what they would do, but he needed people to be around and they just happened to show up. They were more of a group of adult children with the view of finders, keepers. If it's not claimed, then it's up for grabs. Joe did have an easy set of rules to follow, which led to the beating of its own members to keep them in line. The running with Rick and Carl was their worst and most sinister act beating Daryl, Rick and Michonne, and trying to rape Carl in front of his father. You don't get any worse than this. Joe just was there forcefully making Rick watch his young son almost get raped by one of his little goons. That is horrible. That is disgusting. I don't understand how anyone would do this. For one, Carl would have been underage. He was a child, technically a teenager during this time. And to make your father, his father, watch just because it, that's just crazy. Just because Rick killed a couple of his men and they just happened to be, I mean, obviously in self-defense, Rick had to get out of the house that they were in to make a father watch his son get raped obviously it didn't happen but that's what it was going towards is i think one of the worst things that you could make somebody do so that's why i put them at number one you don't get any worse than that they were short-lived due to running into the wrong group obviously rick was able to take out joe by biting his neck out which is one of the craziest things they have probably put on the show but the short list of rules was about as short as their screen time but that is my top 
five, more like a top seven of the worst of the worst villains on The Walking Dead. Let me know down below how you would rank the worst villains down in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe as well and give a thumbs up to this video if you enjoyed it. And I will talk to you all in that next video.